Well, you created your work from 9 to 5, come home tired, work out, eat, sleep and repeat the routine. There comes a phase in our lives where we feel lost. We want to understand ourselves. We want to understand the purpose of our life. Why was I created? What is my purpose? How do I become a better person? How do I become a better Muslim? How do I embody the perfect character of Rasulullah Wasallam? How can I have a vision like Nelson Mandela? What South Africa is doing now for Gaza, which no other nation did, it's a result of Mandela's vision. We want to be like these top role models. How do we do this? We all have these questions, yet we find it so difficult to find their answers. And if we don't find answers, we are going to waste our time. And wasting time means wasting our life. We want to find out what is our full potential as human beings. We want to connect with the deep inner self. And for that, we need spiritual intelligence. Scientific research into spiritual intelligence is still in its early phases, but all kind of religions understood its importance a long time ago. I have been working on my spiritual intelligence for a long time. It takes a lot of time, but once we start to understand it, our daily lives start to make more sense. Every action we do, we associate a meaning to it and we have a higher purpose. And guess what? Even if we were to die and not reach that higher purpose, that higher goal, the reward won't go to waste. Why? Because our daily lives, our everyday actions revolve around that higher purpose, that goal. Today I will give you some insight into spiritual intelligence. But I want to point out, if you want to have spiritual intelligence in your life, you must have emotional intelligence. And I've made a video on that and I would strongly suggest you go and watch that video before watching this one and I'll leave a link for you in the description. So the first question is, what is spiritual intelligence? Dana Zohar has done some very interesting research on spiritual intelligence. She compiled different brain studies where the brain was scanned depending on which area of the brain was being used. So whenever there were logical discussions like calculations, a certain area of the brain will light up. When discussing family, relationships, love, etc., another area of the brain will light up. And when discussing dreams, aspirations, vision and purpose, a completely different section of the brain will light up. So this study reveals we have three types of intelligence. Rational intelligence, which is the IQ, emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence. And... What this indicates that in our lives, if we don't have any purpose we are working towards, we don't have any goals, any values, any dreams, then we are going to feel incomplete. So we need spiritual intelligence. So very briefly, let's try to understand the difference between people who have high spiritual intelligence and those people who have low spiritual intelligence. Those who have high spiritual intelligence are people who have a vision, they have purpose, they have goals and dreams and they are very flexible in how they reach their purpose. Wherever destiny takes them, they flow with the destiny, but the eyes are on that higher purpose. These people are people who have wisdom. They understand the difference between right and wrong. They have maturity of the mind. These people also have a sense of servitude. They like serving others and this keeps them humble. That means they are not selfish. Also, these people, when they go through some sort of suffering or pains or trials, they are able to make peace with their situation and these people are loving sincere and have high values and according to his study by elma these people are generally more healthy and they have less diseases in comparison those people have low spiritual intelligence they are more rational very scientific they have more signs of despair depression fanaticism obsession selfishness uh, they can be manipulative and they don't really understand the difference between right and wrong. Also another thing about these people is that they are very short-sighted. They only see things in that moment. They are not able to have that deep insight and look at the greater meaning of things. Before I give you some practical tips on how to be someone with high spiritual intelligence, I want you to understand the spiritual intelligence of Rasulullah So very brief, let's just talk about his spiritual intelligence. First of all, what was his purpose? As Muslims, we all are very lucky. Our purpose is very clear. It's the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, how we want to attain his pleasure, that's very personal. We all are going to have a personal journey. And for that, we need to know our strengths and our weaknesses. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
how does he want to reach his purpose he set some goals for himself so from these goals would be to give da'wah to you know give the message of islam to give warnings to give glad tidings you know to try his best that more and more people can become muslims so that means his everyday actions and decisions are going to be in line with his goal with his greater purpose so for example let's think about the treaty of hudaybiyah when rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam signed that treaty some of the sahaba thought it was not a good idea why because it made the muslims look weak but rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he's not thinking of the treaty personally that it's making him look weak he's not thinking of in short term that in the short term it's not very good for the muslims what is he thinking he's thinking of the long term and he is thinking if this treaty is actually going to help him to reach his higher purpose his goals and that's exactly what happened the treaty was a great success so that tells us our daily decisions and actions should not be based on short term thinking they should be based on long term thinking and to make something long term you need to have a purpose that you want to reach thirdly we need to understand the how how did rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam reach his goal so he is very flexible in makkah his approach is very different than his approach in medina in makkah the situation is different so he's more tolerant and has more patience whereas in medina the situation changes so he's establishing a state creating a system nurturing the sahaba so they can continue his work so we learned that we need to be very flexible wherever our destiny takes us just move with the destiny but keep your eyes on the purpose and people who have very low spiritual intelligence they become very rigid and strict and they have this mentality of my way or the highway but people with high spiritual intelligence learn to be flexible and they're not too attached to things they can let go of things then the fourth thing is that to reach our purpose we need support so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he needs support as well so he's doing a lot of ibadah and he's getting direct support from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then in makkah he's getting support from his family members he gets a lot of support from his wife khadija and his uncle abu talib when he goes to medina he gets a lot of support from the sahaba so from this we understand we need a lot of support we want support from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we can become strong we need support from our friends family colleagues and all of these people are very important for us to reach to our goals so we need to be very careful of our company as well then the fifth thing is what kind of strengths and values do we have which are very important to us and these are going to be very very personal i want to tell you a story about rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam how he was able to reach his purpose and how his purpose was actually fulfilled based on what decisions he was making in his daily life what actions he was taking in his daily life so our daily lives are very important let me tell you the story of thumama in the 6th year of hijra rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam wrote eight letters to different arab leaders one of these letters he sent to thumama who was a leader of a tribe when thumama received this letter he became angry he rejected the message and also he decided to kill rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam now it wasn't easy for him to reach rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam and instead he killed some of the sahaba and when he killed the sahaba rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam declared him as a wanted man so it wasn't long after that that he was traveling to makka and to travel to makkah he had to pass from outskirts of medina and some of the muslims saw him and they captured him and they took him to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam these muslim men who actually just captured him they were not aware that he was actually that leader but rasulullah saw him and rasulullah knew straight away this was thumama rasulullah said nothing to him he saw him and he left him and he went home and he said to his family prepare food and drink and you know milk the camel and he personally sent food from his house for thumama The Sahaba were a little bit confused thinking he's a wanted man and Rasulullah is being a great host to him actually. Thumama himself was a bit confused. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam went to Thumama and he said to him, "What do you have to say about yourself?" Thumama said, "If you want revenge, I can give you noble blood, you know, in revenge. If you want to forgive, I'd be very grateful. If you want ransom, I can give you any amount you want." Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam left him alone and he went home. He came back after 2 days and every day food and milk was personally coming from Rasulullah for Thumama. 
So Rasulullah came back after two days and he asked Thumama the same question. And Thumama gave the same answer. Rasulullah left him alone again and he went. Sahaba are still getting confused what's happening here. Thumama is also confused. Then Rasulullah returned back the next day. He asked the same question. Thumama gave the same answer. And then Rasulullah ordered the Sahaba, he said, set him free. Thumama was shocked. He got on his camel and he started riding. He, he didn't get far. He was just in the outskirts of Medina and something stopped him. And he returned back and he went to Rasulullah and he gave shahada. And then he said he's got the blood of Sahaba on his hands. And Rasulullah said, don't worry. Once you become Muslim, all your previous sins are forgiven. And then Thumama said, you know, from now onwards, myself, my sword and all people under my care are at your service. Now, how was Rasulullah able to impact these people's hearts, inspire them, change their lives? It was because of his spiritual intelligence. If he had taken revenge, what would he get out of that? So Mama would have died. His people would not have become Muslim. It was too far away from his purpose as a Nabi. If he took some ransom from him, what was that? It was just a short-term gain, no long-term gain. Again, it's not in line with his greater purpose. Forgiveness was more in line with his greater purpose. And it was that sincerity that was coming from his heart, which used to touch other people's hearts and inspire them and change them. And that's the spiritual intelligence we want to embody. We want to change our lives and inspire others as well. So how can you have high spiritual intelligence? Now this section, I'm going to divide it in two parts. First part, I'll just give you some broad ideas of how to become someone with high spiritual intelligence. And the second part, I will break it down into daily tips you can do to have more spiritual intelligence. So let's look at the broad concept first. So first of all, we need to understand who we are has not existed exactly been our choice. We are the result of our genes, of our environment. That includes our parents' upbringing, what school or college university we went to, our friends, what we watch on TV, social media, everything. And now we need to sit down and think very deep. Who do I want to be? What is my choice? What is my decision? How can I become a better Muslim? How can I become a better person? What is going to be the purpose of my life? What legacy do I want to leave when I die? I want my life and my death both to be meaningful. Ibrahim salam also made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking him to grant him a good name with later generations. Asking him to grant him a good legacy he can leave behind. We need to start thinking deep. Many of us feel fragmented where there's an internal battle going on between your intellect and your emotions. And if we want to feel at ease, we want to feel peaceful, we want to feel complete and whole, for well that it's a must that our intellectual intelligence, our emotional intelligence and spiritual intelligence are all in peace. They are all aligned with one another and they are not in conflict with one another. And for that, we really first of all need to understand ourselves so self-awareness is very important and i have given tips on you know how to become more self-aware in my video on emotional intelligence so yeah once again make sure you do check that video out so once we've understood ourselves the next is we really need to understand what our values what do we live our life by so these are very personal for someone it might be time you know they just don't want to waste any time for someone else it might be just live and let live for someone else it might be upholding the truth even if it gets you in trouble so everyone has different values Values and we really need to understand them. Once you become more self-aware, you have an understanding of your values. Next is you need to understand what is the purpose of your life. And this understanding has to come from very deep inside you. And how do you want to reach that purpose? You want to have a broad context of your purpose of your life. And then your daily actions and decisions, you want to connect them to that greater purpose. You want to associate a meaning to your daily life. And all of that will inshallah increase your spiritual intelligence. Next, I will give you some spiritual resources and qualities that will help you to live a meaningful life on daily basis. We want every day to be a meaningful day. 
So first of all, don't belittle your daily activities. Find significance and meaning in them by placing them in a broader, meaningful context. So for example, if you're a student, then every day you are studying. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said that seeking ilm is further upon every Muslim. So, you know, you're definitely following the uh, order of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So now when you're going to study, you need to ask yourself, why am I studying? What is the purpose of my studies? How will my studies help me become a better Muslim? How will my studies help me to serve others? If you are able to associate a meaning to your studies, that meaning will help you to actually become motivated. So in your students who don't study throughout the whole year and they only study at exam time, these students have not been able to associate a meaning, a purpose to their studies. They study only for exams and they only study for a career. As for those students who study throughout the year, it's because these students are able to associate value and meaning to their studies. And, and trust me, I've actually done both of them. When I was young and I did my degree, I actually only studied exam time. And uh, later on when I studied Ma'alimi, I actually studied throughout the year. And the impact the latter studies had on me has been so much more greater in comparison to my degree. So learn to attach meaning and value to your studies and place your studies in a greater meaningful context. Also, I do want to point out students who help other students in the studies, these students have a sense of servitude and that's a sign of high spiritual intelligence. As for those students who want to just do well themselves and they don't want to help anyone else, that means they have low spiritual intelligence. So once you're able to associate a meaning to your daily activities, you won't feel compelled to do those activities. You're actually going to enjoy them and love them because you will feel your life is a life of purpose. So if you are a mother and a housewife and your everyday duties include cooking and cleaning, don't belittle these actions. Yes, they can become repetitive and boring, so have some hobbies, but find meaning in these actions. Place them in a greater context. How these daily actions are going to help you fulfill your purpose because through these daily actions you are actually looking after your children you are nurturing them and you know even after you die if you leave righteous pious children behind you will continue to get reward and um, if you want to work for our legacies we have to work very hard for them so find meaning in your daily actions second tip is in your daily lives increase your awareness of the world stay connected with your nature just appreciate the majestic mountains the sky held above us the earth which is flattened for us Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this in the Quran he wants us to stay connected with the nature connection with the nature is like connection with your own inner self as well another way to actually have connection with our deep inner selves it's maybe through uh, art and creativity you know maybe write a poem or read poems uh, listen to nasheed or only sing a nasheed painting drawings art helps us to kind of dig deep in us as well and that's what we want to do that's where spiritual intelligence comes from you need to really understand who you are also, this would include when you're reciting the Qur'an, recite it beautifully. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam actually said, recite the Qur'an beautifully. And also, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? He says, ponder upon the Qur'an. When you're really pondering, you are doing deep thinking. You're thinking about life and death, about suffering, about trials. You are really thinking hard. And it's this thinking that really helps us to understand ourselves and our greater purpose in life ask questions you know why am I scared of death is it because you know I'm not prepared for it what's the purpose of my life okay the problems I go through in life how do I make peace with these problems how do I find solutions for these problems so start asking these questions and also, uh, try to forgive people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala really encourages us to forgive. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to forgive so many people, even the mushrikun who used to plot and plan against him. So why is it so difficult for us to forgive? It's because of our ego. And, and our ego makes us think very short term. 
but when we are forgiving someone when we don't really want to why are we doing this because we want to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that means we are actually focusing on the greater purpose we are thinking about the long-term benefit so always think of long-term always think of the greater purpose and never think of short-term so part of our nighttime routine should actually be forgive people and sleep peacefully then the next step is start thinking about your path. How are you going to reach your purpose? You don't have to take one path. There can be multiple paths that lead to the same purpose. Start thinking about your, you know, like, do you want to have this career or this career, which is going to help me to reach my purpose? Do you want to study this or do I want to study this? Do I want to be in the company of these people or do I want to be in the company of these people? Really start thinking about different paths and start comparing them, which one is going to be better for you in becoming a better Muslim, in reaching your purpose, in making you live a meaningful life full of integrity and high values. Also on daily basis, start questioning your intentions, your motives behind every action. If your daily life, everything you are doing, it's because of yourself and not because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not because there's any sense of servitude, that's very problematic. Now, human beings we have some level of selfishness because you know survival is very important to us but we don't want every action to be just about me 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 we want to do things for others without expecting any return also at the end of the day just reflect upon your daily actions and ask yourself this action that i did did it bring light in my heart or did it bring darkness in my heart? Anything, anything that brings darkness is just going to burden on you and try to eliminate these darknesses. So really start reflecting upon your daily actions. Until next time, reflect upon your greater purpose and your daily life and see you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.